there's this drill, you know, where uh, where two guys stand at the, um, you know, both slots at the top of the key, and you're passing the ball back and forth, and you let, you know, kind of let the defense set so you're one pass away. And so it was Coach Francis back when he was still here, and uh, yeah. Sherm. And so it was me and Jarrett. Uh, shout out Jarrett Napper uh, yeah. at the top. Big shout out Jarrett Napper. Yeah. So basically the purpose of the drill was the defense had to slide when uh, the offense passed. So yeah. we would catch, face, kind of do a little shot fake, and then turn and pass the ball back. And, well, apparently we weren't going fast enough. So Francis is just like, faster, faster. And, and so it really got to the point where Jared and I were literally just doing this. <laughs> and then Sherm comes and he goes, no, 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 you're doing it all wrong. And Francis is like, yeah, what are you guys doing? Get out of there. <laughs> Jared and I look at each other like, you told us to do this. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Yeah. So, yeah, we got kicked out of that drill. That was, that was after the camp, my players and I ran up to him and started doing the gritty. <laughs> and he got mad. I'll never forget the face of this cheerleader for the rest of my life. Have you met the football players? <laughs> They're the worst guys on campus. Kids like, yeah, we know blue too. And it's like yelling it out and stuff. You're, 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 you're. So now I'm still be in the hallway just pounding push ups, going like, great morning, gentlemen! <laughs> She would have to use the bleep button a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. And now, a quick pop quiz from our friends at Vibrant. Do you know the difference between a bank and a credit union? No. It's not just that banks have taller buildings. It's actually that a credit union is owned by the people who bank there, and a bank isn't. That means the credit union's owners actually want to make sure you get the lowest possible rate on your car loan. And a credit union's own your owners don't think you should have to pay a bunch of fees just to get cash or write checks. And if you think a nationwide ATM network or mobile deposit would be great, good news. So did everyone at Vibrant Credit Union. So they've got that too. Become a member and a co-owner today at VibrantCreditUnion.org. Hey, Connor, remember when we went to the Kimball Beecher Family Dentistry? I do. It was a it was a great spot. They got us out. They got us in and out quick. Very thorough teeth cleaning, and they told me my teeth were amazing. So they are good at lying as well. well but well, I would hope that they, I would hope not. Well, normally at the dentist, like you don't get in and out very quick, and like they like got us right in, took care of everything. Every the nurses were great. The the dentist was great that we saw. Um, you know, we they have locations multiple locations and they they take care of you so we have to shout out the Kimball Beecher family dentistry Mr. Um, Beecher is the man he brought us like yeah no he's he's the go yeah we are back episode 32 of teed up Connor and I decided that we should do an episode with our managers today they have a very unique perspective and uh, have a lot of great stories. So introducing manager Ben Sheridan, former manager, current video coordinator, right football? Right. Luke Pauly and current head manager, Alex Dickey. Fellas, yeah. how are we doing? What's up, guys? Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having happy us on. To be here. We, ben, ben was very nervous ben was <laughs> to come on. Ben was, We're going to start by saying that. He ben did, was in the lobby. He did tell us beforehand, he's like, you guys got to carry this one. <laughs> ben, ben wasn't looking forward to it. But in all seriousness, like managers, I mean, we, we talk about it. We know it, and it's talked about somewhat by certain people, like Billis, for example. Really Shout out Jay on, Billis. He really hits on like how hardest how working people in college managers basketball. are. Yeah, like work so hard. So this is like a great episode because we'll talk about that, but then we'll also talk about just the, the all time stories that no one hears about. <laughs> camp story, like camp is great. Any camp story that you guys have, and then everything else rebounding the most insane trip you had to take for for somebody, for a coach, for a player. <laughs> whatever it is, um, so we can get into that. But uh, I want to start off by just saying, like, for, for each of you, I'll start with you, Dickie, like, why did you why did you initially want to become a manager and kind of what was that process like for you? Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to become a manager just because I played all the football, baseball, basketball growing up. Basketball was always kind of my favorite one. Um, and obviously when you're 5'8", you know, you're probably not going to be able to play, <laughs> play at the, the high level that you guys get to play at. So being a manager was, like, the next best thing. So personally, like, that's just kind of why I picked that. It was a good route. I didn't really know anything about it, but it's it's definitely been fun. Yeah. Football, what about you? Yeah, for me, kind of the same thing. Like, being a manager is just the next best thing to playing. Um, as, you know, Dickie kind of mentioned, I'm also vertically challenged. Uh, um, I got a couple of <laughs> So you play hard football. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. plays hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, 
you know, I grew up a hockey fan my whole life, and so when I came here, it was just kind of, you know, I reached out to, you know, football, basketball, uh, baseball. It's just kind of whatever it took me. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to try out to be a men's manager, got the job, thankfully. So it was kind of, it just happened to work out that way, and it worked out very well so yeah. seven years later. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Benny? Um, I guess for me, like, similar to Dickie, I was baseball, basketball growing up. Uh, love playing and watching the, the game. And I think for me, it was just being a part of a team or a program uh, that really hit, ho- hit home for me. Uh, and I like staying uh, kind of out of the limelight and just doing behind the scenes work. So a manager is perfect for that. You get to be a part of the team just like anyone else. And then you kind of just get to do your own thing and uh, do what's best for the program. He wants all of the credit and none <laughs> of the blame. <laughs> <laughs> the office. <laughs> oh, um, you guys all were huge Hawk fans coming in. I mean, like we can make like Ben make fun of you all the time. <laughs> yep. You can name football scores and but now non ba- no basketball scores, which is pretty interesting. Too many games. Too many games. There's a lot but of man, games. Man, I I can remember exact plays and stuff going back ten years from both football and, and basketball. And basketball. Okay. And football, you come from Nebraska country. Yeah, right? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. My well yeah, my first Iowa basketball game was Iowa's First game when Nebraska was in the Big Twelve, mm-hmm. and so they played over there. That was, I think, Dev and Zach, yeah, Mac Aitens, They were all on that team. So, yeah, yeah. And Dickie, you got family ties, right? Yeah. So, well, what, growing up, you know, my uncle was a coach at Wisconsin, so that boo, was yeah. boo, <laughs> so boo, I went boo. to a lot of <laughs> Iowa games when they, they would play with Wisconsin. But yeah. once he retired in 2015, then you know, I started watching you guys. You guys were on the team, so then it was. That was when it really started for me. But, yeah, my uncle coached at Iowa, too, before then. So there was always yeah. that. I mean, we loved Iowa City growing up and everything. So, yeah. yeah. What is uh, what is your, like, favorite part just about the managers as a whole? It's a broad question. That is broad. I would say a lot. Like, it's just, like, fun, like, just walking into the – like, walking into Carver every day and just, like, walking in the locker room and they're in there. And then, like, I, I, I walk in, I give Jack D shit, and then <laughs> – and we all kind of, like, you know, we all just kind of give each other crap all day. Like, I uh, make fun of Shuey because he likes the Cowboys. <laughs> and, like, Shuey's the worst. <laughs> yeah. okay. Shuey, Shuey has horrible sports sticks. Like, I just, like, I don't know, like, just kind of the rapport that we have always going back and forth, like, just with all of them. Uh, especially, like, uh, with Jack D, too, because Jack D's obviously a character. Yeah. He's famous. And then, like – also the new guys, like, cause like the new guys when they come in, like they're a little like bashful, they're a little scared. So I try to. That's true. So I try to like mess them a little bit, yeah. scare them a little bit, like <laughs> yeah. all that kind of stuff. But then uh, other than that, I would just say like the fact that like I can text Ben Sheridan like whenever to hey, can you come rebound like at eleven thirty at night or eight thirty in the morning. Uh, I'm not gonna go at eight thirty in the morning, <laughs> but I will go at eleven thirty at night. And Ben Sheridan is always unless he's drowning in homework, he will come rebound for me. Rain, snow, yeah. whatever. So. Does, ben, does that suck when he texts you at 1130? Um, you ever, like, dude, like, can you go at 6 like, PM? Honestly, like, can you go? I'm kind of a night guy, so I can do 1130. What sucked was this summer, DeSante Bowen, 6 a.m. every morning, uh, the first couple weeks. And so I, I was like, DeSante, like, let's go at 8. Uh, and so that, uh, but, I mean, 1130 or 8 o'clock, it uh, doesn't really matter. I just have so much fun, and uh, we'll never forget kind of those type of one-on-one rebounding where – uh, not a lot of people get that type of experience. Oh, but I want to ask each of you, just as I asked Patrick, like what is the best part? But you kind of just answered it, Ben, so we'll go to football. Well, also, we have to go into why we call you football because it really makes no sense. Your name's Lucas Pauly. Why, <laughs> why do we call you football? Everybody calls you football. Like, every, everyone calls him football. Call, the only yeah. person who calls you Lucas is my dad. <laughs> no, he calls me football. It's Does he really? <laughs> uh, do you want to go into that? Yeah, so uh, I believe it was my – Second or third year as a manager, um, Ryan Creener. Shout uh, out Big Cat. Big Cat, yeah, Big one Cat. of the greatest of all time. Uh, <laughs> he just randomly one day decided, he was like, you know what, I'm going to start calling you Football Luke. Like, Why? <laughs> and he goes, you run like a football player. He goes, now that I think about it, you kind of play basketball like a football player, too. <laughs> yeah, you're Football Luke. And so then, like, that's what it was. It was Football Luke, and then it just it evolved into just football. And, like, yeah. I thought it was going to end after he left, but honestly, you guys have carried on the legacy because <laughs> we had two Lukes. Shout out Luke Slavens. Yeah. And, and you guys were like, like, no. That's that's Slavin's. That's football. Yeah. And yeah. So now neither of them are Luke. Now I would <laughs> we don't. I, yeah. I would guess that most of the new guys coming in the last couple of years just don't even know my real name. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. When Matt when Matt got here this summer, Coach Gaines, he was like, I said like, go football. 
He's like, who the hell are you talking to? <laughs> I was like, football. <laughs> football. He's like, why do you guys call him football? I said, uh, Craner started it, and we yeah. d- we've just been rolling. <laughs> it's just football. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so football. Why, like, what is your, I guess, go back to in your in your day a little bit. What was, like, something that stood out about being a manager? Um, I just think for me it was so you know I, I didn't really touch on this when you asked like kind of why I want to be a manager but like I had always had aspirations of working in sports never knew what that was going to look like uh, but I knew that this job could be an avenue for that and one thing that I found very quickly is like you know we have a smaller manager group compared to a lot of other not just Big Ten teams but very teams true. in general mm-hmm. um, you know this year we have nine but when I started we only had seven and so um, you know we were a smaller knit group but we also had were given opportunities to do things that not a lot of other, you know, programs were allowed to do. And, you know, a lot of managers don't even come in every day. The head coach doesn't know their name. And so, like, we got the opportunity to, um, you know, like I said, do things that kind of put us on a path to get the job, you know, that I have now right. um, kind of. And so that I knew that I was kind of – I was a part of the team. I wasn't just, you know, somebody that um, – not team as in, like, a player, but, like, I was a part of, like, um, a group that was working towards something bigger. And, um, you know, they just kind of gave us – uh, the opportunity to kind of, you know, prove, like, why we belong. Um, and we weren't just there just to rebound and everything. You right. Know, we actually you know, got to be involved. Right. Yeah. Dickie, kind of going off. Take, yeah. yeah kind of going off what Luke said. Like, we do have a pretty small group compared to other teams. Yeah. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of responsibility, like a lot of different jobs that we get to do that most other managers, I would say, don't get the opportunity to do. And, I mean, like I said before, I didn't really know what to expect with the manager job. Like, they told me, hey, you'll you'll go to every practice, you'll go to a couple games, and that, that was about all I knew. You don't get to go home for winter break. Like, that was it. Yeah. And so as I, like, started to do it, it was kind of interesting, like, learning how all the back, background stuff went. Like, you know, when you're watching how our team works, like, you don't really think about – Oh, every team meal every day or every like practice film session or like all those little things so then once I started to do that I was like this is it's kind of cool and like yeah. you know that that's my favorite part is just like how important our job is with the background mm-hmm. and like you know that's something you don't really notice unless you're really in it so yeah no but yeah definitely I mean I'll I'll go into like my manager piece a little bit um like for the people that don't really know like you said there's only nine of you now and it used to be fewer but like with baseball team for example coming from that team there's like you know 20 you know it, what it seems like 30 like you don't even know because they're kind of on a schedule which is great because they're very helpful and they get so much done but you're not as close knit and you don't have as much to do with them as you do the basketball managers and so like with you guys i mean patrick and i we go back since we got here, we've been friends with the managers for forever. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we, shout out Jay Nick, I mean, POC, Jay Nick, <laughs> Fred, Paul the O'Connors, Fred, yeah, like I mean, TLC, BOC, Trev, Mun- <laughs> Munson, Munson, T Mass, T Mass. Like, we, I mean, there's so many. Like, TOC used to take me to basketball tournaments in sixth grade, you know, so the and that was just because, like, my dad is like, oh, like, TOC, like, can you take Connor to Chicago? <laughs> and, we would just, and like, he's a manager, like, he just had, and that's something he had to do. And so, like the work and then the requirements that you all have, I mean, you have to be there at sometimes, like Ben said, 6 a.m. And sometimes you don't get to leave till 11, 12 at night. Like there are days, there are, there are work weeks that are very long, yeah. like very, very long. And like the players can leave, the coaches can leave, but you all are expected to be there most of the time. I mean, you talk about winter break, you talk about the summer, Ben, it's, it, it's a nine to five. And it, even if nobody's there, you, you yep. could be bored, nothing to do, but you have to be there technically in case somebody comes in and your responsibilities go from like rebounding travel, like, I mean, organizing practice, cutting film, like there's video aspects of it that you got to handle, uh, equipment, um, facilities, like road trip, road trips, road trip, fruit, food, road trip, travel, the buses, like all of this. And you, and you work with KD and Al on all of this, but this is all your responsibilities. You got to make sure. And, and, you know, coding, and it, yeah, I mean, and none of it ever, I mean, very rarely, knock on wood, it's never, it's usually right. So, like, I don't want people, the listeners, to think, like, you guys kind of undersold yourselves because the work that managers do is crazy. It really is. Like, yeah. it's out of control how much how much you guys have on, on your plates. It's You could argue it's, I mean, you don't have to go out and play the games, but you have more 
time required of you throughout that's not entire, even an argument that's no yeah yeah that's, yeah. Not, that's not, <laughs> not yeah it's not even close like you have more stuff you have to do you have more obligations and so i mean it's just it's kind of crazy to see like as a player i feel like you would rather though sorry if i kind of cut you no, off you didn't. i feel like you i would rep like be at a place where there's like nine managers where like you're really like in the trend like you're right. in it like as opposed yeah. to like if you're at a place where there's 27 managers right and you come in three days a week like then you're not it's like that's what i was kind of saying yeah. like it's like that's why this place is kind of special in regards to managers anyway because like there's other schools where you do have 25 and like i can't remember what school we were during manager games that's when we always chatted up with other teams but yeah. like they were to explain yeah we like don't get tickets to our own games like we have to buy tickets to go to the game because there's that 20 sucks. people and they have to alternate yeah but like us like I mean, some people go on every road trip. They go to every game. Like, they're more involved than a lot of people at other places. So that's why yeah. here is so, like, Dang. so fun and cool. Like, even it. though, like, even though, like, the work sucks. Yeah. And, well, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's fun. But there's – and there's a lot of it. I feel like it's more rewarding to do what you guys do as opposed to – Yeah. And even when it does stuff. suck, like, we're all doing it together. So, yeah. like, right. at the end of the day, you have the whole, like, team as a group, but then you also have the managers as a group. Yeah. It's like you're all kind of in the trenches together. And yeah. It, yeah, makes I, it a lot better. Sorry. Oh, you're good. I, like, I didn't go super in-depth. Like, kind of like what Dickie said, like, the opportunities that I was talking about. Like, like we get set up for success because, like, you know, if we go in and talk to whomever and say, like, you know, we want a career in basketball and we want to do this long term, like, like, we have those tools, whether it's coding games or traveling, seeing how all that travel stuff works, you know, working out play or helping, you know, player development coaches or assistant coaches with workouts. Like, we get to see all of it. Like, it's not like we're just there a couple times a day and, like, maybe we get – you know, a pair of shoes and might get lucky if you go on one road trip. Like, you get to see everything. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. Um, all right, I want – you hit on manager games. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. We got we to gotta talk about manager games. Right. We have to, right? <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. it's like kind of like the staple of – I mean, there, perks the there were 2,000 right. people at the Iowa State manager game about five or six years ago. Another shout out to Jay Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Double Double that this year. There were two or 3,000 people there. Yeah. I'm there not even three kidding. Three guys show up without shirts and with POC painted on their chest. <laughs> yeah. And POC goes, I don't even know those guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's for a minute. Like, that's for. Yeah. They, they meant it. No, they absolutely did. Like, they were fired up. No, yeah. That was the day where POC made the all time vine. Where he uh, put the suit on, oh, the NBA and somebody ESPN opened the door for him, yeah. and he walks in, and somebody he had somebody take a video with the like da da da, da whatever the music is, <laughs> the ESPN, like yeah. the ESPN NBA. music when they play when they show like LeBron James like yeah. walking into the arena, like <laughs> POC did the same thing, and the vibe went like viral. But anyways, talk about manager games, guys. Yeah, Dicky, you, you want to go yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Stop. Uh, I mean, they're they're definitely fun. But intense. They're, they are intense, especially when you get some of those. Like, we have, you know, C that plays, Coach oh, Eldridge. Coach like, Eldridge. You have some of those it. those guys that played professionally that play, and it's like they, they take it seriously. Um, but then it's it's also fun just because, like, you get to, like I said, interact with the other schools and kind of, like, yeah, you, you do want to beat them, but you're also kind of building and networking through those. But, yeah, the games are insane, intense. I mean – it's full 40 minutes of basketball. So, like, you have guys that might not have worked out in years since they were done playing <laughs> high school basketball. <laughs> now they got to run up and down a full court. So, it gets – I mean, you get tired, and there's subs, and, yeah. you know, we have – you know, everybody plays. So, it's 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 a good time. Yeah. The players go. They get into it. Oh, Patrick, yeah. Patrick, you guys draw plays for us and stuff. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good time. Always. It's a good time. Football, let's hear it. Well, I mean, my second year, my, we had an all-time squad. I think, you know, that's when we had, you know, Coach Eldridge, Kyle played. We had Josh Oglesby that made an appearance for a few times. Yep. But, I mean, we got – I mean, for anybody that doesn't know, they have the manager rankings, and we were ranked number one that year. So that was pretty electric. <laughs> um, <laughs> ranked number one overall. Yeah, we ranked number one in manager games. And I don't know how much longer that carried on, uh, but – we, I mean, that was a fun year. We had Michael Bear too before he was a, a player. So. Shout out Dirty. Yeah, shout out Big Mike. Uh, so I mean, like we had a really good squad. Yeah. Um, not because of anything I did, that's for sure. <laughs> I knew my role, but uh, no, that Hustle was a lot guy. of fun. Yeah, Hustle that's guy. right. Yep. Um, for me, uh, so my first year was COVID, so we didn't get to play any games. Yeah. And we only got to play a couple last year, but when I really realized the intensity of manager games. You're playing Illinois. Uh, early Those dudes were the worst. Yeah. Early <laughs> December. They are, they, yeah. are the worst. they are the worst. Uh, early December, and it was early in the game, and C 
uh, kind of swung and cleared space and put the Illinois video coordinator on the ground, <laughs> just connected, basically elbow to face. On accident or on purpose? On. I mean, they were hacking. Yeah, they, were hacking. Uh, they were hacking. And so I was. I was like, oh, my gosh. And then C goes, cylinder foul. <laughs> <laughs> cylinder. Foul on the Illinois guy, oh, the Illinois. They argued. They argued about it for, like, seven minutes. And, like, the games last 40 minutes, but 30 minutes is also arguing with each other yeah. about calls because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no referees. Because there's no refs. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, every manager game, there's guarantee, guaranteed to be two or three just <laughs> absolute hilarious stories. Yeah, and, and if Courtney Eldridge is, is Courtney Eldridge is involved, there's guaranteed to be double that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many near fights in manager games? We don't have to use names, but how many near fights? Like, and also, well, there's been real fights. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's been real fights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like punches thrown, but like there's been verbal altercations. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of well, chirping. Yeah, a lot of chirping. You wanted to fight the entire Illinois team last yeah, year. Yeah, there are crazy. crazy. <laughs> there's crazy amount of chirping. Dude, football. There was one time in the middle of the game where Courtney was fighting with whoever was guarding him. Luke was fighting with like two or three of them, <laughs> including somebody on the bench. And Dicky was in a fight with the guy who was guarding him. Like all, like, like this was all happening like simultaneously. Not, yeah. I was like, "Who's dribbling the ball?" <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to bring it up. Yeah. Somebody's got to bring the ball up. That I remember. I wasn't at that game. I was pissed. I missed it. No, but dude. Those guys were the intense. Those guys were the worst. And, and they, they were Underwood's the cool. Tyler Underwood is cool. But like the rest the of them were like. Bro, this one guy, like, he kept cursing. Like, every time they did anything, he'd be like, F yeah, F yeah. Like, I'm like, bro, what is wrong with you? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, relax. (laughs) They thought they were actually trying out for the team. Yeah. They probably think that way for real. No, and they had, like, 15 people on the side. Like, dude, it was nuts. And I was, and they, dude, they, they were just being. coach is a little bit of a meathead, too. Dude, yeah. He was, yeah. Just, he was, he was actually, actually nice, though. No, no he, was, he was one of the few nice he guys. He was one of the normal ones. Like, him and Tyler <laughs> yeah. Underwood were both normal. They had an assistant coach that played. Yeah. That was, him and Courtney got into it, but other than that, he was normal. He but was it, it was their managers that were, like, out of control. Yeah. Are you talking? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, it, it, it's the same guys that like during the COVID year that were yelling boo. It was no surprise once we played them what they were gonna have like. Yeah. <laughs> and Dicky, the guy that fought Dicky, like Dicky was like he just like picked a fight with me like out of nowhere like, <laughs> for no reason. No, I I think it was. I mean, you guys know I li- I like to shoot the ball and I, yeah. I I wasn't shooting very well, and I made one and like. Just, you know, a little confidence booster. I just kind of threw a little chirp out there. <laughs> and then he just, like, a little took, chirp. took it a little personally, and we just were going the whole time. And I was – once once you get me started, then it's kind of like I just I, – I like to go at him a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So that that was why that led to that. But he he took it. I mean, I, I wasn't even really talking to him. I was just talking in general. And he, <laughs> he didn't like it, I guess. But. No, my favorite manager story of last year, manager game story, was when you guys were playing women's managers. Who are actually pretty they're good because yeah, they yeah, practice good, like yeah. with the women's yeah. team every day. Like so, the women's managers are, are no no joke. So you guys typically you got how do you got you typically lose against them right because they're they're always yeah. pretty good. Yeah, they're they're well they're in good shape. You know? Yeah, they, 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 they play a lot. They, run, they, they, run, they, run guys. they they get a lot of leak outs. <laughs> yeah, leak out layups. So. No, but so they were they were drilling you guys yeah. last year, and you guys made a miraculous comeback yeah. with like two minutes left, and Ben Sheridan hits a three <laughs> with like. 45 seconds to cut it. It was like, you guys were down like 35. Yeah. He hits a three to cut it to like nine, and he just goes, what's the spread? As he's running back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great teams always cover. <laughs> Damn right. That surprised me. It it surprise that me one, that part was awesome. Sam Close had like 50, 50 points. Yeah, Because Sam Close was going to play basketball at St. Thomas and then ultimately decided to come here and be a manager. Or I think he, he, played, he was he, on the team. Yeah, he yeah. played there he for was a year. There for a year too, I think. At St. Thomas. Yeah. 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 And like he, he in the manager games before, like you could tell he was a good player, but he hadn't really like really came on yet. In that game, I was like, whoa, he had yeah. like fifty. Yeah. He could he, shoot. He, was, he made he, every shot. He could shoot it. He, he had an had an incredible game at Purdue. He kind of carried us there yeah. too. Really, that was an all time performance. That, that was yeah. a great we, we, manager story. We yeah. beat Spike Albrick and PJ Thompson. We had five guys, one of whom was Slavens, who was only been medically cleared. Like literally, can't play. None of us had a heart condition. Yeah. We were borrowing. Uh, we were borrowed uh, their shoes. Or Luke's Luke Laquetta, Luke Carter Laquetta. King. Yeah, Aaron's. <laughs> we had random <laughs> shoes on. And you beat we Spike beat Albrecht, him. a starter on a or on a, a key 14. piece on Final yeah. Four team. Yeah. Yeah. So you beat, and he was on the team, and so was PJ Thompson. Yeah. Started at Purdue for three years. Yeah. Well, you guys had KD, right? KD, KD, KD got C. hot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, KD, KD C, C, Sam Close. No, C. I don't think C Wait, played. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he oh, did. It was me, me, Luke. 
KD, Sam, and and, uh, and, Slavin. and Slavin. Yeah, and Slavin yeah. is basically just there to run back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> that could have been good for he his heart. Yeah, no. He's not ready to come. No. Oh, no, yeah, we That's had to get Slavin subs early and often. Yeah, That's, That's there, was, there was no one to sub for him. Yeah. Gloff would have ran to the game. To sub <laughs> <laughs> he actually would have. All right, hey, real quick, we're gonna take a break, and we'll get into the the fun part of this this pod after after a quick break. A night out at El Rey's is a great time because you got the live music in the front, which is usually like some country vibes, you know, a little bit, and then but you can go to the back and then it's like a nightclub type atmosphere. So like you get you get the best of both worlds from from both sides. And bartenders take care of you. It's a good spot. We we know some bouncers there, great dudes. Yeah. Shout out Loudon. Um, and the owner is also a, a, a phenomenal guy. So based on the lines, you would think that yeah. The music is unbelievable, which which it is. So I highly suggest that everybody goes to El Rey's. It's packed all the time. Now, from our friends at McDonald Optical. If Mr. McDonald is nearly as feisty as he was on the sidelines watching 8 through 10-year-old Jack and his son Nolan, that means if you go to his eye doctor or place, you got to be in pretty good. You got to be in good <laughs> shape. He's going to take care of you. Yeah, he's going to take care. If you're having any issues with your optics, you got to go to McDonald Optical. Because he's definitely going to look after you. He's got the solution for whatever your problem might be. And, uh, no, great, great people over there, 100%. And take care of you. Yeah, without a doubt. You're, we are back. Episode 32 with our good friends, Ben, Football, and Alex. I don't ever call you Alex, yeah. but Dickie. Sounds weird, Dickie. <laughs> it sounds weird. <laughs> Not so for the good part. Now, this is, this is what the audience has been waiting for, I would assume. Yeah. Um, this is... Really, the fun part of being a manager: the stories, the all-time crazy, the all-time just insane, insane things. Makes that you no guys, sense. Like, why the did they do this? Things that you guys see on really a, I would say probably like an insane story worthy moment happens probably once a week, and then once we start in the season, like playing games, it happens pretty much every day. Yeah. <laughs> but so I'm going to start with you, Ben. What's your favorite story up to <laughs> up to this point? Um. Well, first off, I want to say. You mentioned the story every day. Me with refing, there's always... Oh, my God. Oh God. How did I forget ben that? Ben does ref uh, practice. <laughs> oh, so, God. T- to be clear, refing is not considered, before I started doing it, a manager duty no. during practice. No. But shout out C for making me do that last <laughs> year. Uh, and now I have to do it every day. Uh, so there's always <laughs> stories to come from that. But the, the more uh, specific story was uh, my first year. It was a COVID year. Uh, so I didn't go on many of the trips, and so it was our first trip. It was at uh, Sioux Falls playing at Zaga, and so they had gotten there. It was Friday night, and I get a call from Dickey. I'm like, well, this is a little bit weird, uh, and so he calls me, and I don't know if you have heard this before, but he's like, Patrick forgot his shoes. You got to oh. go to Carver and drive all the way up to Sioux Falls. Oh, God. Uh, oh, my God. And that is shoes. brutal. And so... <laughs> Uh, I go, first off, I'm like, I'll do it, but let me call my mom quick. And I don't know why I said that. I was just panicked. Uh, <laughs> and so, I'm, and then I'm like, well, at least I get to go to the game. Like, this is a big time game. Hell yeah, I'm in. Uh, and so, I, he's like, yep, uh, hurry quick to Carver uh, and start driving on up. I forgot my shoes. Well, so then, <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. then <laughs> I call my mom and she's like, you're insane. Uh, but... I'm like, well, I'm doing this. I'm going to this game. Uh, and so then, like, five, ten minutes pass, I'm, like, scrambling, getting packed up, ready to go. And Dickie calls me and goes, we were just <laughs> We didn't actually have to do that. I'm like, I, we've done crazy stuff before. Like, I was, I was ready to go. And I, that's, that's what I love it. about Ben That's Sheridan. pretty good. Yeah. He was ready to go. Ben Sheridan was locked. <laughs> yeah. There's a test for the new manager's loyalty. Yeah, that's uh, a hell of a drive. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? Like six hours. <laughs> and, the, and the game was at 11 a.m. So it was going to be a quick And you turnaround. had to drive from Des Moines to Iowa City, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I mean, but no. I you was were in Des Moines? Uh, no, it was COVID year, so I was I was at my apartment. But yeah. it was it would have been a five to six hour uh, drive there in probably not good conditions. Wow. No. Yeah. T- terrible conditions. No, that is but, an all-time. That's an all-time. <laughs> I so, never heard that before. Yeah. 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 I got pranked, <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right. Football, you've been around for a while. Have so, been. you, I mean, we've got... And we'll keep like we got a bunch of these coming. So what, what, give me your best one. Well, I got so <laughs> a couple of pretty funny ones. Um, so the first one is my second year as a manager, and you know, kind of what like you know, 
I was saying the opportunities we get, so we get the chance to, you know, be involved with workouts and, like, passing on the court and stuff. So there's this drill, you know, where uh, where two guys stand at the, um, you know, both slots at the top of the key, and you're passing the ball back and forth, and you let, you know, kind of let the defense set so you're one pass away. And so it was Coach Francis back when he was still here and uh, yeah. Sherm. And so it was me and Jarrett, uh, shout out Jarrett Knapper, uh, yeah. at the top. Big shout out Jarrett Knapper. <laughs> so basically the purpose of the drill was the defense had to slide when uh, the offense passed. So okay. we would catch, face, kind of do a little shot fake, and then turn and pass the ball back. And, well, apparently we weren't going fast enough. So Francis is just like, faster, faster. And, and so it really got to the point where Jared and I were literally just doing this. <laughs> and then Sherm comes in and goes, no, 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 you're doing it all wrong. And Francis is like, yeah, what are you guys doing? Get out of there. <laughs> Jared and I look at each other like, you told us to do this. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Yeah. So, yeah, we got kicked out of that drill. That was, that was you, got, you got kicked out of the yeah, drill? We got kicked out of the drill oh, for doing wow. what he told us. <laughs> Oh man, that was that was hilarious. Uh, That's a great one. Another That's one real. actually is the same uh, same game Ben was talking about. So uh, we had just finished up the Gonzaga game, and uh, so the exit of the Stanford Pentagon. Um, both ours and Gonzaga's buses were right next to each other, if you guys remember. And so they were identical buses. And um, so I'm pulling some bags out, and I'm following uh, following Sherm out, and uh, <laughs> he gets his post game meal. Uh, Slavens hands it to him, and. Uh, I can't remember if it was me or uh, Slavens that told him, like, hey, sure, make sure that you go on the second bus where, you know, there's two Gonzaga's buses out there, too. And so... (laughs) All of a sudden, we're walking out, and Sherm just starts walking on the first bus. (laughs) And I was like, I was like, I was like, no, 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 coach, coach, we're on that bus. He goes, you guys told me it was the second bus. I go... Yeah, one two, <laughs> and he goes. And he goes. No, two one. <laughs> what? Why would it be two one? <laughs> oh, so that was, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> two one. Two, two one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Reverse order. <laughs> you you should have let him go. Just let him go. I love he, it. He would have ended up in Spokane. He, yeah. he might have. He might have. All right, Dickie, what do you got? Um, the best story I have at the time was not very funny. It was very. Uh, Panicked, <laughs> but uh, oh when we went to Vegas, oh gosh. two two years, uh, yeah, yep. two years ago. I know this one. Um, so we we had this backpack. So this was my second year of being a manager, and I went on a couple road trips my first year, but the second year was like my first time going on all of them. And the guy that went on all of them the year before that, Quinn, he wanted or he always said like, hey, make sure the the bag of computers that we have, we would bring four computers, is always in like the meeting room that we have. Just so then if somebody needs one, like, to break code a game or a coach needs one, like, they can go in there and grab it. So I was like, okay, like, that's what we do every time. So we go to Vegas, and we're staying in Caesars Palace, um, and we have this huge meeting room, and I, I leave the bag. We went there on a Monday, too, and we didn't play till Friday. So it was, like, a whole week thing. I leave the bag in the meeting room under a little table, and the next morning I come down, and we were, like, switching meeting rooms or something because the first meeting room was too cold or it was, like, some random thing. And I couldn't find the bag. And I was like, well, maybe they put it in the other room. So I go check the other room. It's not there. Okay. Kinda, I'm starting to panic now because it's like, yeah. okay, well, like, well, how are we going to do any work? And quickly realized the bag got stolen. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so that has all of our, like, four computers in it that we code the games with. So i trying to find it, and I go up and uh, – find Deech, Thomas Deech, he was the video coordinator at the time, and I was kind of explaining to him. I think he could tell, like, what was going through my mind of, oh, shit, like, it's not good. <laughs> We're in trouble. And uh, so he starts, like, running around, like, trying to call the police, whatever, <laughs> like, all this stuff. Vegas police have more, and, more going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he calls, like, the security at Caesars Palace, and they pull up the cameras. And apparently this guy that had been, like, Stealing stuff all night, like just a professional robber. <laughs> what? So he got me. He comes into the meeting room because they didn't lock it for some reason. I don't know why. And uh, he had just a bunch of stuff in his arms, like bottles of alcohol, like backpacks, all this stuff. And he sees our bag of computers, goes over, realizes that the bag of computers is more valuable than a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> so he leaves the bottle in our meeting room <laughs> oh, God. and, and takes, the, takes the bag. So now we know for sure they're stolen. <laughs> so then uh, the uh, police finally get back, and they're like, yeah, those apparently got sold, like, 
hours later. Like, they found them, like, sold in Mexico or somewhere. Like, they got out of the country, like, within a couple hours. It's just <laughs> insanity. So insane. So, so we like, never found them? No, never found them. That's impressive. Other, yeah, no, he, I mean, he was a, he was a good thief. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Good, for him. That good for him. But so we... Uh, nice deal. We have no computers, so then we had to have... Somebody from back home, because we never bring uh, Coach's computer, Coach McCaffrey's computer on the road. He even, does he even have a computer? He has one. That yeah, never does. Yeah, <laughs> I think Luke. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to use it. No. Yeah. It, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what he said? So Football. Yeah. 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 Teach. Yeah. Football. Yeah. So we had to uh, have one of the managers that didn't go on the trip put it in like a FedEx thing, overnight it to our hotel. So then we had like two computers because Deech had one, and then we had this other one, and just it was insanity for the rest of the week trying to like get yeah. stuff done. We were trying to order new computers, and like the only positive thing out of the whole situation was those were like really old computers. Yeah. That's so now we now we got the upgrade. I mean, <laughs> you got, you got something new had to happen. So yeah. We got we rid of new them. ones. Yeah. But honestly, the the best part of that meeting was, or the best part of that story was. The meeting when we got back, because <laughs> Al Al was very unhappy that we lost them, and <laughs> he before like the, the meeting we had before it had this sheet about like you know what to expect like kind of what the th- rules should be, and he said hey like we're going to Vegas like this isn't like you guys got to be prepared for just a whole different world out there. <laughs> <laughs> Al loves so, Vegas. So, so then we we come back. And he has the same sheet, and it was, like, highlighted or, like, marked or something, that bullet point. And he just goes, this is exactly what I was talking about. (laughs) (laughs) That that was a rough trip. Dickie's like, yeah, Yeah, that's exactly what I was expecting to happen. There there was a lot that happened. Yeah, it was just insane. One of my favorites was one, you probably are the only one that remembers it, football. Maybe you, Dickie. Quinn told at the banquet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great one. You want to get into that one? It's uh, camp. I mean, you, camp stories yeah, are awesome for yeah. managers. Um, I, I think you were kind of remembered a little bit we, more. You, were you helping with that one? Well, so the I think there, it's kind of two stories in one because the first story is like the actual like the balls rolling down the hill. So <laughs> we always have to transport these camp balls from Kent, or from Carver to the field house. And we do it in the most just crazy way, like two golf carts. We have two ball racks <laughs> hanging off the back. Usually one of the, the younger <laughs> managers is holding on to them. 500 campers yeah, there's, yeah, there's with just basketballs. Hundreds of basketballs. Just and pulling so these laundry pulling carts these behind the golf cart. And so <laughs> the hill that goes, like, behind Carver mm-hmm. onto the one way or the, you know, down onto, um, what is that, First Ave or something? Yeah, First yeah. Ave, yeah. like the busiest street. The busiest street, street yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this was before I was there, but I guess the balls rolled – off of the the rack and started going down that hill and so that was always like the funny manager story like don't let that happen where the balls are rolling into oncoming traffic (laughs) and so nobody had ever told like al or anybody really that story besides the managers and so this is my (laughs) freshman year and all the senior manager always goes up like gives their little speech and so quinn goes up there and he's like Tell starts telling the story and everybody's you know dying laughing. They think it's hilarious, and I just remember looking over at Al and he's just stone cold, just <laughs> clearly he's pissed just off. Pissed. Like he's, he's just so pissed. <laughs> so yeah, there's that, hundreds that, of basketballs going into oncoming yeah, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Al's <laughs> picturing this. That was a good. That was a good one. Yeah. You guys are in traffic, like holding up, traffic, <laughs> yeah. like holding up cars. Yeah. And yeah. there's. That's hundreds awesome. of balls. Hundreds. Of the, yeah, that's just awesome. bouncing down the hill, mm-hmm. rolling yeah, into was, the woods. I think that they got good. them all back, though. Yeah. So. That's what matters. That's yeah. insane that yeah. they got them all we back. We figure it out. That's yeah. that's the main thing about being a manager. That, if you figure it out, like you, it doesn't matter how it gets done, you get the job done. Yeah, yeah, you can't make up the stuff that happens to you guys. Yeah. So, so you just got to find a yeah, way. Yeah. Honestly, as a manager, it's kind of a thrill. Like If bad things happen and then you fix it and nobody knows about it, yeah. you're just like... Nice. Mission, mission accomplished. That's the best, <laughs> That's That's the awesome. best part. <laughs> That's nice. the best. Are there any other camp stories that stand out? Like one in particular? There, there's so many like there's so many so many like well, camper specific right. stories yeah. where there's just like yeah, some I mean, kid like getting carried out for rolling his ankle or something. Like for just when he actually didn't do anything. He, like <laughs> there was one I can't there was one kid back when we used to have like an overnight camp. He he came back to play with his friends one-on-one. We had, like, a little open gym time. And he was wearing, like, slides. <laughs> and he starts playing with his friend one-on-one, and his friend breaks his ankles, just, like, quick crossover. And this kid just must not have been able to handle the the uh, crowd of, like, 
embarrassment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so God. he fakes an injury, and I see Brad Floyd and, like, KD and – all them start carrying him out. <laughs> like he's like what? gets carried back to Slater. And everything. <laughs> like, and so, I mean, there's a lot the of dorm. stories like yeah. that. Stuff like that. Yeah. I, one of my favorites, it doesn't involve any campers, but uh, so Trevor and Bird, um, they were the elder managers at the time. And so, like Dickie said, the overnight camp, we would always order pizzas, usually for the staff every night. And <laughs> well, apparently, this particular night when the pizzas came, a much larger tip was left than what was supposed to. <laughs> oh gosh! So, Not and good. for years we always thought it was Trevor. And to the like, Al would always just be like, "Now, now don't pull a Trevor Smith and get a fifty dollar tip. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tip like Trevor." <laughs> and then <laughs> we were talking about. I think it. I think it might have been at Trevor's wedding a couple of years ago. Bird finally goes, "Oh yeah, by the way, that Trevor story about giving the fifty dollar tip that was me. And I just never corrected Al. <laughs> oh, God. He just let Trevor. Take yeah, he it. just let threw Trevor under the bus." <laughs> <laughs> there was a one, there was one manager story, and I'm not going to say who asked them to do this, but it was like it was like it was insane. There there was a manager, and I think it was either a player or a coach, but somebody needed something like four hours away, and a, somebody went and asked the manager, like, "Hey, I need you to drive to downtown Chicago and pick this up for me, and then wait a couple hours." And then drive back. <laughs> and, like, that was a serious request. And it actually, like, they had to do it. Like, they drove, it was like an eight-hour trip there and back. And they had to wait. Like, it was a full day of nothing. Yeah. Just to, it was, like, that's the, those are, like, the types of requests <laughs> yeah. that oh, yeah, managers are, get. There's some crazy. I, I had to drive you to Minneapolis. Yeah, I don't you did. Remember that. Yeah, he yeah. drove me to Minneapolis. And I, I was up on that literally the whole night. I hadn't went to sleep yet the night before watching Riverdale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Tommy O'Connor showed me uh, the town when I was in like when I was like twelve. That, that's a that's a manager. Like he, Tommy O'Connor had like the best like car games. Like you know those games that like before everybody had phones or whatever that yeah. you would play in the car. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Like I Spy. Tommy mm-hmm. had I Spy like on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> he had the best like car games. It was so I, I always loved car rides with Tommy O'Connor because yeah. he was he was he was awesome. Are there any other are there any other uh, shared last with- minute stories? Benny, you got another one by any chance? No, I can't. I mean, I remember the one Tony. I mean, Tony, like, me and him interact with when I have to ref him. Yeah. But he was an absolute asshole to the, whole, <laughs> to the poor volunteers who, who were trying out to be managers. At camp. Uh, yeah, and so they ref, they ref the little kids' games. And these games are basically football because the poor referees don't know. They've never ref before. So it's they have just, no idea, yeah. And so Tony just was on this particular referee the entire time and, it was the first time I'd ever seen a coach get kicked out of a camp. <laughs> of a camp camp. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, he deservedly tossed Tony. Tony deserved it. Sounds uh, right. But I can't think of anything else. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, – I feel like we covered that's, – that's a lot of ground we covered. Yeah. Um, so we're going to – we appreciate you guys coming on. This has yeah, been this Appreciate has been everything fun. you do. I mean, and and everything guys. else, yeah. Except I mean, G-Loff. I think, <laughs> except G-Loff. Yeah, that guy's the worst. And Shuey. No, Shuey's really the worst. <laughs> But, uh, no, thank you guys so much for coming on. I think people will really appreciate kind of what, what goes on everything. and Because everybody sees you guys and everybody knows, oh, you know, that's their managers and whatever, and they, they, they do this, this, and that. But, no, they do much more than what you think. And uh, it goes behind the scenes. What you see is, is not everything that <laughs> encompasses being a manager. So we, we, we appreciate you for that, and uh, thanks for coming on. This, this was really fun. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. Thanks for having us. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sir. All right, and we're back to a very, very special continuation from our from our manager episode. We welcome in some of our sponsors and somebody that we've known for a very long time, played against your son Tyler uh, in basketball. He's quite the hooper, got some bounce. Let me tell you, I've seen him dunk on some people over at, uh, over at Court 45. Um, playing in some pickup games, and we uh, fortunately enough we got to play him this year. Can't you get talk the bounce from you. Details. Yeah, you did. That, that bounce <laughs> came from you. Three sixty windmills, you know. Yeah. Not, not yeah, from his mom. Uh, <laughs> she'll tell you yes. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but I believe her. <laughs> I want to let. You, yeah, right, right. I want to let you uh, you intro yourself for sure. Um, and so you can both of you can kind Absolutely. of give the whole outlook of what we got going. Well, here. guys, thanks so much for uh, for having us on. Absolutely. Real proud of you guys. 
Uh, this podcast is uh, is amazing, uh, great listenership and viewership. So, yeah. so thanks a lot. So, and we're really happy uh, to sponsor you guys. I think the NIL is amazing, and, yeah. and it's a great opportunity for uh, for young athletes uh, to have an opportunity to take advantage of you yeah. know some of the things that uh, they've worked hard for. Yeah. Quite quite frankly, and we appreciate you so much for everything you've, you've done for absolutely. us. Absolutely, well. for yeah. sure, for sure. So, I'm uh, Khalil Andrews. I'm a plastic surgeon here uh, in uh, the corridor. Uh, area. Um, I have been here for about 10 years, and mm -hmm. Courtney's been with me for the majority of that. A uh, little known fact, Courtney actually uh, competes in, in strong, I don't know if it's strong person, I don't know politically correct, but yeah. strong man it's competitions, strong man. Yeah. and she actually has uh, won some competitions. She actually has been number one uh, in, uh, in the country. Yeah. Uh, so Courtney can uh, talk a little bit about that, but we've got a broad-based plastic surgery practice, but also uh, just started a wellness center right. called the ReCenter, yep. and so uh, we can get into uh, a little bit of that. But I've been following you guys for years, of course. Tyler played against uh, against West uh, when he. Uh, well, some AAU stuff. Tyler was on the Barnstormers for one summer mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and played uh, a little bit, uh, but um, but yeah. So it's um, it's been fun to see you guys, you know, grow and and, and develop. And I'm sure we'll see uh, Pat in in the NBA at some uh, some point. I know that's, that's the goal. You, that's uh, the goal. That's absolutely, the goal. absolutely, absolutely. So the ReCenter uh, is an interesting <laughs> enterprise because um, it's all about wellness, and so we have. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber, we give IV therapy. Uh, IV therapy uh, is able uh, to deliver uh, IV fluids, of course, uh, when uh, folks are dehydrated. Uh, NAD, uh, glutathione, which are uh, anti-aging uh, uh, medications. Uh, also, uh, vitamins. Uh, we have an infrared sauna, which is great for uh, for recovery. A lot of uh, athletes use, uh, use a sauna. Uh, we have something called a red light therapy, and I know you uh, I did that. got to use yeah. the red light. Red light's interesting because uh, light, of course, uh, imparts uh, energy to our tissues. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's been shown that uh, red light, infrared, near-infrared light, uh, can increase ATP production, and ATP is, is our uh, cells' uh, uh, energy currency. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it's, it's interesting that uh, red light has been shown uh, to improve uh, muscle recovery and, and to give us uh, more energy. Yeah. Um, we uh, also have uh, something uh, called BioT, which is actually interesting for men with low T, so low testosterone. And I'll let Courtney uh, talk a little bit about, mm -hmm. uh, about that. But testosterone has been touted as being the male hormone, but actually it's important for women uh, as well. But for men who have low T, uh, we actually are very, very scientific about it and that uh, we, um, we, we get some labs and uh, we uh, can identify men who have low testosterone. And testosterone is important uh, for energy, important uh, for mood. Uh, also, uh, men need it uh, to gain weight and gain uh, mm -hmm. muscle, uh, also for sexual function. So I'll let Courtney talk, uh, talk about, uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good leeway. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, over so there. Can, I'm like, yeah. absolutely. Well, we can okay. speak real quick before you go too. We can speak on because I want to hit on the IV therapy stuff yeah. really quick yeah, yeah, and yeah. how helpful that is. Patrick yeah. and I came and we did that, and that is you talk about the hyperbaric chamber. Yeah, you talk about the red light therapy. You talk about the IV. Yeah. Um, the IV fluid that you actually poked me with. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's like that's next level recovery. That, that's what you see in the pros, right? For like sure. That's what you see high level athletes. For sure. That's what you see them doing. And yep. that, so like a wellness center like this, that's why it was so good for us to partner with you. So yeah, that yeah. way people know that there is a place like this where you can go yep. and receive these treatments. Absolutely. That's right, so right, right here in Iowa. We, we actually had uh, a woman who, uh, uh, actually man and woman, they were married, uh, did a uh, junior Ironman. Mm -hmm. uh, and she came in, both of them actually came in for HBO. Right, so HB hyperbaric oxygen uh, is interesting, and I am going to let Courtney talk yep. about sexual dysfunction and uh, and low T. But there we uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and she's chopping at the bit to do that. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but hyperbaric oxygen is interesting, and and the way it works is it uses something um, uh, called Henry's law, mm -hmm. and so uh, there is uh, a law that states that if a gas uh, is placed under pressure above a liquid, you can force that gas into the liquid, mm -hmm. right? So it's how we carbonate drinks, 
right? Yeah. And yeah. so it's CO2 that's actually in the liquid. You open it and the CO2 is released. Well, the same thing happens when our bodies are placed in a hyperbaric chamber, and we call it diving because it actually comes from decompression sickness recovery. So these divers were getting something called the bends when they ascended too quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Navy uh, developed these hyperbaric chambers to, uh, to, to treat those folks. It was found that uh, doing this um, has salutary effects uh, on the body as well. So mm-hmm. essentially what we're doing is that we're giving oxygen at an increased pressure and we call it atmospheres and so if you go 33 feet below uh, sea level you're at two atmospheres Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're actually forcing oxygen into the plasma right so oxygen is normally carried on red blood cells and it's about 97 98 percent saturated but if you breathe oxygen at 1.5 two atmospheres that gas is forced into the plasma and actually you can deliver more oxygen to the tissues than hemoglobin can because you can actually dissolve more oxygen in the plasma than can be mm. carried on hemoglobin yeah. and that's sort of how it works that's and why it's so effective yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. so um for muscle recovery it is uh, amazing right so we work out and we build up lactic acid uh, in our tissues and that comes from something called anaerobic respiration that's when uh, we work out so hard that the oxygen delivery to our tissues is lower than our demand for oxygen mm-hmm. in our tissues. And we're able uh, to produce ATP through a uh, much less efficient system called anaerobic respiration. And that's when we get the lactic acid. And so that's why the Normatec uh, are yep. important. A lot of athletes are using Normatec. We actually have the Normatecs, and I'm sure you guys yep. uh, have them as well. And that helps to squeeze the lactic acid uh, out of our tissues. If you combine that compression therapy with hyperbaric oxygen, you can dramatically uh, improve recovery. Uh, It also causes angiogenesis, and that's why it's helpful before you work out or doing it as a maintenance theory like LeBron James does, like a lot of uh, basketball, uh, football, baseball players uh, do, is uh, I remember I have a friend who works uh, at a center uh, called Restore Hyper Wellness, and all of the uh, Avalanche NHL players came in uh, Mm -hmm. for uh, treatments, numerous uh, treatments uh, there when she she worked there. So you're absolutely right, Connor. Uh, A lot of these wellness treatments uh, are used by professional athletes but yeah. um, so so let's talk about low T low T is actually really really common uh, with males uh, usually uh, it's males 40 50 years old uh, and um, it, this has really been a revolution and most of the time we have to deliver uh, testosterone to men through injections you can't can't take it because it's a steroid hormone but we actually uh, can deliver it uh, with uh, with pellets and I can have uh, Courtney talk about it because she she's the one that actually uh, helps uh, uh, place the pellets uh, in men yeah yeah so I you know I'm gonna kind of go back and, and say it's not necessarily 40 to 50 year olds I actually see a lot of younger people too um, you know, and, and in medicine, we, we always kind of look at lab values and what's within the normal range. And, and so a lot of times for guys, it'll say normal between like 200 and 800. And I'm over here, don't you think the guy who's at 200 is looking over the guy who's at 800? Like, what's he feeling like <laughs> yeah. over there, right? Yeah, right? You know, like, I bet you he feels like that much better than me. And what does that mean for you? I mean, sports, re- you know, sports recovery, you know, performance, you know, energy, muscle building, you know, leaner body mass, better sleep, um, concentration yeah. stuff too. Absolutely. They kind of talk about memory word finding problems. Um, for me, it's always the, you know, I, I put my salad and I put it on a, you know, it wasn't a bowl, it was a, I'm like, plate? You're trying to say the word plate? But think of a bob. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. actually a sign of low mm-hmm. testosterone. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So where if you use the wrong word and say, I put my salad on a car, that's dementia. Okay, so that's something different, yeah, you know. But like you know, so I always say if you if you if you lost your car keys, as long as you know they went to a car, you don't have dementia. You just right, lost your car right, keys, right? right, right, right so, right, right, right. Um, so, um, but that's one of the signs. You know, people think about libido and stuff. That's actually the very last thing that happens. And so, our big thing is that not going off of lab values. We want to go off of where does your body perform the best at? And so we talk about hormone optimization, not about a hormone replacement. Okay, so you might not be like you know if if you're in your 20s, whatever 30s, maybe your testosterone's at 500, but you really should be between 900 and 1100 mm-hmm. right yeah. and so it's, see, that's where yeah. your body is the best optimized meaning that that's where you have less risk of disease functions or recover the best you know like i said the very lowest is once you go below 200 is that you start having erectile dysfunction 
no one wants to wait that long, um, you know, and it's amazing that depression and anxiety happened before that. Imagine that, yeah, um, you know, right, hmm, right. I wonder why the two of those go together. Right. Um, yeah, if I can't come up with my words and I don't sleep, all of a sudden I'm going to have some, 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 some problems elsewhere. But yeah. it shows up way before that. And so um, so our big thing is that we like to go with labs. We like to go how you feel as well. Um, and then I also like I said I'm a, and I'm an athlete, so. I'm not just going to go off of where the lab value says you're going to be. I'm going to see how are you performing. Um, you know, right. like, are you getting your numbers? Are you getting your PRs? How are you pushing yourself? How's your recovery going? So your recovery from sports is going to go a little faster yeah. than two. So, I, uh, I want to ask you a question. This can be one of the, the last things, I guess, really quick. Um, but we, you, you mentioned depression and anxiety, and we've, and we've done an episode on mental health. This, all of this is so connected to that as well. A hundred percent. So and, and that's, it's something that's important to us. So if you could just hit on, hit on uh, what you know about that and the, the connectivity there. Sure. Um, yeah. Really so uh, obviously the lack of sleep and kind of going through all that too is going to make a huge difference. You yeah. know, so they have the psychological effect of what you look like and how you perform a hundred percent. But they actually have found out you can actually wean people off of some of their anxiety and depression medications when you actually get their optimization of their hormones. And so you might notice that what you felt like maybe at one decade or one component of your life is different than even five or ten years later. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the other thing that we also have is um, what we call nutraceuticals, which is a fancy word. And I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was a gimmicky word. I'm like, just say the word vitamin, just say the word mm -hmm. supplement. I don't mm -hmm. want to be selling some snake oil over here. I'm a medical professional. Yeah. Um, pretty much what it means is that they actually medically verified what was in in the vitamins okay so like what you get over the counter i don't know if you've ever seen like the 60 minutes or the whatever that stuff they do at nighttime you know like mm -hmm. those, it's not those fda things. approved yeah, yeah. well yeah. you know and, and it's like what's on the value you read the labels you're trying yeah. to be smart some of those people don't even actually have or some of those vitamins don't actually have the active ingredient in there no. it's not even that it's at 10 percent. It's, no. it's not even in there what it means is that it's four point medically verified so let's just say from the time it was a plant the time it was ground up and put together in a capsule to the time that you took it and to the time that your body used it in its cells, it's four point medically verified. So that way you actually know that what you're buying is actually legitimate. And so they found that your serotonin is made in your gut, right? We give antidepressants and I tell people that just makes you not depressed. It doesn't make you happy. We don't yeah. give you pro happy pills. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. we just, people are like, I feel like I'm mm, on, on meds right. and I'm like, well, you're not depressed though. Right. So that means it works, but we don't, and, and healthcare, we started becoming disease management providers and we stopped becoming health care providers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big difference with us versus other places. Even our IV center, a lot of times there's spa clinics. We have medicine and we have doctors and stuff. We're actually looking at your labs and we actually are trying to become health care providers versus disease management providers. Mm -hmm. And they start caring for your health because that's what actually matters the most. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, 100%. I, I want to give you the last the last say if uh, we're, we're going to be having you on an, two more times still Absolutely. so we're going to yeah. be hearing a lot yeah. a lot more from yeah. you but um you know is there anything else that you want to <laughs> yeah wanna sure cover? i know you have uh, a lot of students who listen yeah and so we do absolutely. offer student discounts because many of our treatments uh, are very important absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. you know kids uh not getting as much sleep as as, as they uh need uh for uh peak performance for tests and, and, and that kind of thing. Hangovers, yeah. you know, <laughs> Hangovers, so, yeah, the IV therapy. Say, we, we, we do sports recovery and life recovery. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, for yeah, sure. Definitely. For sure. I mean, you might, you know, go out and have a little bit too much to drink and become dehydrated and you have brain fog and headaches and uh, hyperbaric oxygen works for headaches. Uh, I mean, IV therapy right now helps. they're finding for a seasonal affective disorder too. I mean, we're coming into winter in Iowa. Unfortunately, we've had such a great fall. Yeah. I'm like, it's, winter is coming. Yeah. Um, winter. we know it's coming. Winter. Um, winter. it's so yeah. sad. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> um, and so like just knowing that you have those resources that we don't have to hurry up and think about spring break and where we're going to run away to, what can we do now to start feeling better? What can we do to keep our vitamin D levels up? You know, yep. so we have yeah. supplements for that, but we also have injections for that too. So we can just boost you for the next three months. Cause you know what? I suck taking vitamins on a daily basis because <laughs> I like to sleep in. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. how about you just go in and you cheat, get a shot of it and it's good for three months. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Done. Easier. Easy. Yeah. I like simple. Yeah. I keep it simple, yeah. stupid, right? Yeah. So I'm just like, I don't have that. Just pop in, get it done. 50 bucks, you're done. Yeah. You sure. know, and so this isn't meant for somebody who, who doesn't have the money for it. This is all reasonable price things. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that when you're taking your vitamins and stuff, only about 30 to 50% of exactly. them get absorbed. When you're doing an IV, 100% gets absorbed. It's called you know? bioavailability. Absolutely. So you're traveling and you get all this sickness. You hear all this RSV crap that's going on right now. We just don't have time to get sick. You know, yep. that adds more crap to you. It just adds more to your plate. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be sick and going to school. You can't be sick and playing sports. You can't. Like, we just don't have time to be sick. Yeah. And so, you know what? We can do stuff to kind of prevent that too. So which, that's kind of nice. Yeah. No, so, yeah. definitely, definitely. Well, I guess to our listeners, that is a uh, that's just a start of what you're going to be hearing from 
from our friends at the at the Re Center. Um, they'll they'll be back. But as you know, as we've said before, as you hear on our on our ads, Patrick and I went there and we did and we did some treatments and some therapies, and it, it's great. I mean, is how did you reason. feel like twenty four hours later? Did you feel great. better? Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. I need to go back. So and it's what, but like, <laughs> and another thing too, I want to talk about this next time is just like healing injuries for uh, sure and people recovering like from a surgery, right? Like if I, you know, like take my hip surgery for example Mm -hmm. we can get into we can get into a lot of that uh, on the on the next episode but uh we appreciate you joining us for this one and and we'll see you we'll see you again soon all right thanks Thanks. so much yeah